In this video, we're going to take a look at theoretical and experimental probability. Now, when we're dealing with probability, the general form in which we're going to set these things up is um, the things, the number of ways that what we're interested in can happen over the total number of ways that something can happen. So let's go ahead and just jot that down here. I write it as what we want to happen over the total number of ways that things are possible to happen. So let's take a look at this first one. Let's say a dog trainer has five collies and three beagles and we want to know that if they choose one dog randomly what's the probability that they're going to choose a beagle? Well what we want to happen, how many total, how many number, or how many beagles are there? Well, there's three of those. And what's the total number that are available to be chosen from? There's eight total dogs to be chosen from. So three ace is going to be our probability of choosing a beagle. So a little bit less than half. Let's take a look at this next one. When we're rolling a standard six-sided die, what is the probability of getting a number less than three? Well, how many numbers are less than three on a six-sided dice? Well, let's see. One and two. So it'd be two out of how many things could happen possibly? Six. We can simplify that. That would be one-third. How about this one? The probability of getting a number less than eight. Hmm. Six-sided die. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. All of those are less than 8, so 6 out of 6, which would be equal to just 1. So what's that mean? Well, any number on a die is going to be less than six, less than 8. Excuse me. So the probability of 1 tells us that it's certain to happen. This next one, probability of getting a number less than 1. Well, how many numbers on a dice are less than 1? Hmm there aren't any so 0 out of 6 or 0 tells us that it is impossible to happen so a couple special cases that we might run into if it's 1 that means it's certain to happen if it's 0 that means it will never happen okay so that's theoretical probability we look at what possibly can happen experimental probability we use when we have some results and we want to figure out the probabilities based on that because there's times when we can't figure out a theoretical probability for various reasons so we just have to look at the results so here's some results that we're given and I want the probability of getting an orange out of this there's white orange and purple so the probability of getting an orange would be well again it's what I want to happen over the total number of trials. So 14 over the total number of trials, 4 plus, or 7 plus 14 is 21, plus 4 is 25. So 14 out of 25 would be the probability of getting an orange. Probability of white or purple. <sighs> white or purple. Well, so I need to total up the white and purple. So we have 7 plus 4, which would be 11 over 25. Then the probability of black. Huh. I don't see any black results, so the probability based on our experiment must be 0 out of 25 or just 0. Okay, now let's just back up here for a second. The probability of getting an orange was 14 out of 25 so what if we're interested in the probability of not getting orange well we could go and add up the others or remember that all the probabilities if we have a particular situation the probabilities are going to add up to one so the probability of that happening plus the probability of it not happening are going to add up to one so here's the probability that we're going to get an orange so the probability of not getting an orange must add up to 1. So if we take 1 minus 14 over 25, well, 1 could be rewritten as 25 over 25 minus 14 over 25. That would be just 11 over 25. Well, we also found that here, but notice that we can do that. Sometimes it'll 
you'll find that finding the complement, the not situation, is easier, and then we can just subtract that from 1 to get our probability. So, probability, theoretical and experimental. Uh, we put basically what we want or what we're interested in over the total things that could happen. Simplify it, it can be displayed as a fraction, which we looked at here primarily, as a decimal by converting that fraction to a decimal, or as a percent by taking it, making it into a decimal, slide the, de the decimal point over to, and boom, you've got a percent. I hope this was helpful. Um, keep working hard on your math, and I know you'll do great.